that we have tombstones, we need a graveyard diorama. So let's make one. I am using black foam board for my base, however cardboard would work as well. On the short side, measure 13 inches from the edge. Make marks so we can draw a line straight across. I use a sharp X-Acto knife to cut on the line drawn. Cut two. Let's stack and glue these together to make it stronger. Take scraps of foam board or cardboard and use a ruler to draw long strips. This is an inch and a quarter wide and 12 inches long. Cut on the lines drawn to make a long rectangle. I'm thinking now this is a little too long, so let's cut it down to eight inches. Cut several. Stack and glue three to four together. I'm using hot glue and I'm pretty generous with it. We're gonna paint these later so we need them to not curl and the hot glue should stop that from happening. That feels pretty solid. Repeat to make more. I have six total. Cut small rectangles of foam board, glue them to the top and bottom to make a column. Take school glue and tissue paper, add a little glue, use a brush to spread it out, tear off pieces of tissue paper, place them into the glue, and then brush them down. Go over the sides to cover all of the raw edges. We have gone paper mache crazy lately, but it just works so well. After it's been covered, allow it to dry. While waiting, let's plan out our gate. Trace around leftover foam board that is the same shape as the columns to mark where each one will go. I have about four and a quarter inches between each pillar. Take bamboo skewers and wooden coffee stirs. Cut the bamboo skewers to the height of each column. For me, that's about eight and a half. I'm using floral wire cutters to cut the skewers. I cut eight, take two coffee stirs, make a mark for a four and a quarter inch segment. Divide the space in between evenly. I'm going about every half inch, giving me a guide where to glue my bamboo skewers. And I guess we're only gonna need seven and not eight. Make the same marks at the same spots. On the other coffee stirs, place them six inches apart Skip the first set of lines, then glue the bamboo skewer on the marks. Continue gluing every half an inch. I stop before the last set of marks, so I have two empty marks on both sides. Repeat to make four, get black acrylic paint, and paint each one. I start with a thin coat, allow it to dry, then do a second coat. Now that these are painted, let's check on the columns. They're dry, perfect. Get gray paint or mix your own using white and black. Paint all of the columns gray. Add a little black to the paint and gently tap the column with the brush so that we can add some more texture. I'm thinking we should up the spook factor just a little. I found these skulls at the dollar store. I glue them on top of the columns, then paint over them with the acrylic paint to match the rest of the column. Use black paint to add a few lines so it looks like we have a few cracks here and there, then allow it to dry. Let's go back to our base. I picked up a fluffy green material at the fabric store, cut a piece to cover the foam board. I wrap it around the edges and glue it underneath. Be careful while gluing. This fabric seems thick, but it's actually very, very porous, and that glue goes right through it and onto your finger, which is not fun. To prevent yourself from being burned, you can also use the back of a pair of scissors to help save your fingers. If you don't want to use fabric, then scrapbook paper and artificial grass are good alternatives. I'm using fabric because I got it for a good price and I like the texture. Now I can flip it over to see the grass. 
Once the columns are dry, cut a small hole in the fabric where the column is supposed to go. Fill the hole with hot glue. Place the column on top and hold it until it dries, pressing down firmly. So our column is actually glued to the base and is very stable. Repeat to make a corner room. Our bamboo skewers are now dry. Place it behind two of the columns. Mark where to trim. Cut on the line drawn, then glue it between the two columns to make a fence. I left my points facing up, however, if that makes you nervous, you can always turn it upside down and face them down. I left an opening on the longest wall for an entrance. We finished everything on both sides so we can look at it from different angles. Add the tombstones we made in a previous video and our haunted tree to complete our graveyard diorama. If we want to make it even spookier, we can add a few skeletons from this skeleton garland we found at the dollar store. Make one of the hands stand inside the fluff so it looks like someone's trying to get out. And maybe one already got out. Since the tombstones and the tree are not glued down, we can rearrange them however we like, adding to the fun of the season. Let's throw a few pumpkins in there for a splash of color and some fall leaves to brighten the place up. Or we can place it right next to our Halloween decorated house to make a large diorama. Thank you for joining us today while we made a miniature graveyard. Check out our DIY tombstones and haunted tree video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at myfroggystuff and the frog vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting!